Howdy neighbor. With the cold weather that we've been having the last few months, uh, you know, typical winter time, you know, lately it's been below freezing uh, the past few weeks. Um, and it's been wreaking havoc on my, uh, on my truck. Well, not re wreaking havoc, but uh, just certain things like my ignition, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment. So, typically on these trucks, um, usually in the winter when it's real cold out and the whole ignition assembly here gets nice and cold and um, the grease inside gets so heavy that when you, it's real hard to turn the ignition or it's or it's got a lot of resistance in it, um, it, it can break things. And for people who have tilt wheel columns or t uh, with tilt tilt steering. There's a little actuator that'll that it likes to break. I've seen that happen multiple times. In fact, we we just fixed one on Todd's Bronco. Um, if you guys have seen his videos or the videos I make of his Bronco. Um, anyways, I have a little bit uh, a similar problem, um, although it, the symptoms similar but not quite uh, the same. The fix is not going to be the same. So this is what my ignition does right now. You can keep turning it. So, I went to start this thing, got a few cranks out of it. So it was real cold, it was like 20 degrees, maybe a little bit colder than that. Um, and I got a few cranks, so it was real stiff. And I tried to do it again, it went eh, click. And I was like, ah, oh, crap. So I had to use the, uh, uh, I just jumped the solenoid to get this thing to fire off. Um, although it's been nice not having to have a key here, because I can just, you know, I can get the thing started. I, I've been pushing on this rod. I take, uh, show you how I've been getting it started. Took this cover off that was around here and I'd get this right here. I push down and get it started. Get, get, already getting tired of doing that. Um, so once you get it running like that, it's nice because you can lock the truck and let it warm up while you go back in the house and nobody will steal the thing um, without you know, unless they want to break a window and drive with the window broken out. Anyways, getting off track here. I'll show you what happened. It broke the end right off in there. So a couple things we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna start at the top, and what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to get the steering wheel off. I'm going to um, get this remains of the tumbler out, and we're actually gonna take the ignition, the turn signal switch. We're gonna pull it out, out part way, and then we're going to get this whole metal assembly out. And we're, I've got uh, some brake cleaner. I actually had a two for six deal at, at AutoZone, so I got two cans of brake cleaner. We're gonna clear out all that nasty grease, and then we'll just coat it with some silicone spray. Just spray it down. That should leave a film in there, so we'll be good there. Um, also, I'm gonna. I have a, a better ignition switch. I'm gonna pop in there. I actually took this apart earlier and just wiped it down, and it uh. Moves pretty good, so I'm not gonna do that with just the tip of my fingernail. Um, so I'm gonna get this so that it moves nice and freely and it's slick. Um, and then we'll put that also put that switch in there. I think this switch down in there is um, is not happy. Something's not right with it. So because this has all just been stiff lately and it just finally broke it. Anyways, 
I've got uh, so this is a 82 F-150, but I put, um, I, I think I got it from an 89 Bronco, but it's got the map pockets, so I keep tools like this in my map pockets, or, or flashlights. I keep my wire strippers. Yeah, map pockets is nice. So, cross point screwdriver. Can't really. I'm on a. I'm on the curb, so I can't really turn my steering wheel. Let's see. Screw tray. And it's still about 20 degrees out, and I got my big jacket on. It's kind of warm in here, and I'm getting get to that point where I can almost just take my jacket off. This steering column is from a uh, 1990 Ford Bronco. Um, it's essentially the same column, um, just with this newer style, newer style steering wheel. I believe you can take the old steering wheel and, and swap them out, but I like the thicker um, uh, diameter on this steering wheel, so that's what I went with. So the other thing is, I've got to lock this steering wheel there we go I keep all my tools in the tool bin these are frosted over okay so I locked it like that because as you'll see in a moment here so you're just going to use a breaker bar 15 sixteenths Now these, uh, if you lose this nut, I forget what size it is, but if you're at a junkyard, grab one of these nuts, just grab these. So this nut here, this is a new one. Um, you can get this at Ace Hardware. I forget what size this was, but um, if you do lose it, um, you can get one from Ace Hardware or the Hardware. I know my Ace Hardware store sells them. Okay, so I got a couple wrenches. This this kit a steering wheel puller I have from Harbor Freight uh, uses a 14 on the uh, the main dude, and then the bolts here seem to be a 13. So 13 fits pretty good. So not a perfect fit. So what we need here is we've got. These two bolts, a couple washers, and then we got the plate. So I'm going to put it, the two bolts are like this. The steering wheel's at an angle, but I'm just going to go like this right up, again, right up against it. This seems to work both ways, so... I think we're going to use this part. So we'll get a bolt and a washer. Hopefully I can get this thing off of here without breaking the little bastard. I actually, trying to pull the steering wheel off my old um, steering column, I ended up snapping the bolt right off in the thing. I was like, how am I going to get this wheel off of here? I think I'm just gonna thread this in there. Bolt. Well, one of these days, I'm thinking I'm gonna make my own steering wheel puller for these, for these uh, for our trucks, because I want to be able to not fuck shit up. That's in there pretty good now. I'm, I, we may have to get some torch on this. Ah. There we go. Never mind. Just make sure those bolts are in there real nice. I like this thing. Make 
Sure you bolts are in there real good. Woo, man, I tell you what. When things are just a little janky, yeah, that'll really put you on the edge of your seat. Not the right thread, but hot damn. She held. Also, you know, wearing gloves when you're turning wrenches is also not a bad idea. That took a little, I was get started, it was starting to hurt. Um, Move that wrench so you get a little cushion on there. It actually made it a little bit nicer. So I'm steering wheels like that. And I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna clean those contacts up. Get some sandpaper going. So. On this stock column, you have to take the steering wheel off to get at that pin right there. So, we'll turn that, and it should mean that we can push up on that, that. almost. So you, you see what I'm pushing on? A pick usually works good for this, I think I have one out. You ever get the pick and it's too long? Hey, really? Damn. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm, I don't wanna go look for the pick. So I'll just break the tip off of this one. That makes it so now I can reach in there. There we go. So I made my own custom pick. I just broke the tip right the hell off. So yeah, this is junk. I need to get the turn signal switch off. There's a little flat. So the turn signal switch lever is not coming off without a fight. So I got my vice grips here. It broke right off. That's what I'm gonna do. So I've got Freaking screw from somewhere. Okay, so I've got some slack there. Now, see, uh, what I like about these columns is that I can. Uh, Place this much easier than I can the tilt column. Yeah, we got some fixings to do on this. I would show you what that took down there, but there's no room to get the camera in. And then I'd show you, and then there would be that one guy who'd be like, I still couldn't see, this video sucks. <laughs> so 
So this uh, thing is loose because of this one bolt. This appears to be an 11 millimeter, which is already loose. Oh, that was loose too. Well, now that I'm in here, I can tighten this back up. This is always kind of loose. We can get her tightened up. That'd be great. Okay. Oh, that thing is messed up. <laughs> it's it's a bit wavy. It's got these little T-bolts. We'll probably hold them in place with grease. Just throw some grease and then stab them up in there. So I don't lose this. Kind of a weird setup, if I'm honest. So you can slide that back. Yeah, this actuator here, there's nothing wrong with this guy. So this is your, uh, I wonder. I have an idea. So I've bent that just enough to where that's no longer, you no longer have to have the thing. We're gonna need the pick. Gonna get that ear waxy, ear waxy stuff out of here. There's another tumbler. Oh, some of the old grease out of there. What I want to try? Can I just spray some of this in there and have it just work better? That's what I want to know. appears to be yes so now I've sprayed some of that in that slider oh god that's a lot better I think I can live with that So all, all this, this is, yeah, that moves a lot better. Yeah, there we go. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna drill a hole, a small little pilot hole in there. Got a one eight. Will that reach in there? Oh, I guess it will. So here's what my plan is. I'm gonna drill a small hole. I'm gonna run this in there. Should be able to pull it out. I can't 
can't get it to come out the other way, so it's because it what it has is there's grease in there that's keeping it from coming out, and then you know you got the little boss in there, it's also smushed in there, so I'm gonna Then actually, of course, I turned the camera off and I just put vice grips on it and yanked on it. It came right out. Little oh, cocksucker. It smells like it smells like lube in here. I'm just. something like that. There's gonna be a little bit of schmoo in there. I would like to just take this all out and brake clean it, but that's not an option right now because that one bearing will come off. So, this all moves pretty good. It's still pretty cold. So, we're gonna put this in the on position, which is when it last failed. We're gonna take our new ignition switch. Also, I got this from AutoZone, it's 10 bucks. Uh, here's the part number on it. Um, even though this is a 1990 uh, year column, the ignitions are the same from 82 to, basically I think from the 70s all the way up till uh, 1992 when they, uh, just before they switch to the arrow nose deal. So I just turn the key a little bit so that little button right here depresses. That should engage, that was a little, a little tight. So, let's just try it out real quick. Sweet. Go ahead and put our, we're gonna put these T-nuts back in. It has a slot, it goes all the way up the thing. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. that started. Oh, someone started up their Toyota Camry. I think it sounds like crap. I think 20 foot pounds is good. These are also locking nuts, so I don't have to worry about that coming apart. Tink. So real quick, I wanted to show you, if you guys are tired of having to pop your key out, or no, and you have to push this to pop your key out, you can take flat blade, flat blade screwdriver or uh, vice grips and just bend this up a little bit. And it should, Still clear. There, so now you, yeah, that's great. The 
This is awesome. I've never... First time using a tap. and put this steering column back together now. Okay. We need to have that in there. I'm glad that's all rock solid now. It's weird having this thing all jingly around and stuff. This guy here. Repaired switch. This is this this wire here. If you're wondering what this is, what it does is when you put the key in, it grounds this out and then it makes the thing go ga ding, ga ding, ga ding. We don't need that. Through the hole and into the thing. <sighs> Blue's good enough. So this has a flat spot on it, and that will engage. This will engage, and then right there it engages. So okay, that's as far as it's gonna go. So okay, so. These are technically not reusable, so that's fine. I'll put blue Loctite on it. So now we just tighten her down. This probably needs to be put on with like a hundred inch foot pounds or something ridiculous. This is a lock nut. We got blue Loctite on it. So, <sighs> yeah, that steering column is much tighter. How do I fix that? Okay, I'm gonna plug the wiring harness back in and we'll see, Let's make sure she works. I like that that's tight though. 
I was, I was like, why is this thing loose? So I'm like, I bet you there's a bolt loose. Because this was partially, when I got this steering column, this thing was torn apart. Um, the steering wheel was taken off. I don't know what they were doing. But I put it back together and bought the whole thing for like 50 bucks. And it's been working ever since. It's, it's, I bought it because it's a straight shaft. So I don't want to have any doodads going on in there. Go put our put our mismatch cover back on. You know what? I might wait till this warms up a little bit. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, that was a bit of a pain in the butt, but hey, we did it. Everything works. <laughs>